So we're finally gonna get on top of these nasty weeds around the green. We're gonna get a mow on the turf. We're gonna put some fertilizer down as well today to help push some growth in the green. A little bit of high nitrogen on this. And yeah, we're just gonna kick along with it all. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. So last night we had close to 15 mil of rain. I actually got my weather station up finally. We got 14.4 mil of um, rain in about three or four hours. And these sides have still held really, really well with that tacker fire, which is awesome. Do need to get some more seed down in there because we have got a few bare patches where it just hasn't taken for some reason. So we might get into that later in the video as well. But as you can see, the green is still improving like a lot. Like we're getting really, really good growth and coverage, nice and thick. Not too many bare spots to be honest, like they're quite tiny, the bare spots, and even they're really, really damaged areas, which is the worst on the whole green. Pretty good. Let's be honest, it's not bad at all. But we wanna try and push just a little bit more growth before it cools off. So we've got a mix of products in my knapsack here, which I'll talk to you guys about quickly. We've got some survival to strengthen our roots on this green just here, because we wanna keep pushing root growth in this sand as much as we can. I'm gonna take a plug out probably next week and show you guys how much the roots have progressed. Also putting out a high nitrogen product called Pronto, which I haven't talked to you guys about at all. I do sell that on my website. It is a really uh, fast acting liquid fertilizer, which is just basically 24% nitrogen, which is gonna help push growth on this. So if I put this down, we are gonna start getting quite a bit of leaf growth. So I've also added some Vitalize in there for the P and the K and the microbes as well. So we're getting the most of it out of our soil on top of that. And we're just basically spray it across enough to keep up on top of the mowing now as well, which if I keep regularly mowing, say every two days, once I've got this higher nitrogen product out, it will start to push the green to grow sideways a lot more instead of just up it'll start growing sideways, putting some growth into the stolons as well that are on this area and just really help it dig along. So, mate, let's do it. Let's get this out and get this thing growing. So, fert is all down now. I'll leave that on the leaf for at least four hours before I go cutting this area again. Just so that it really gets absorbed by the leaf properly. And that's not a problem. Now, also, since it is gonna be absorbed by the leaf or that nitrogen, you're not gonna have a big problem with the leaching and going to the sand as well. That's why I've been using granular furt. That's a little bit lower in nitrogen and doing it regularly, just so we don't have that problem of it leaching through the sand because our organic, organic matter still needs to build up on the green. It's not holding nutrients like crazy once we start getting granules out. So that's why we're using liquids very, very often at the moment. Also, I just wanted to answer a quick question about the dew. So a lot of you guys have been asking me why I've been removing the dew in the morning. As you can see, there's quite a bit of dew in here at the moment, which I'm not worried about. But the main reason I've been removing the dew is one, disease prevention, especially on bent grass greens. You gotta be really careful of like leaf wetness for too long because it can cause pythium it can cause seed dampening as well on top of that now that is not the only reason we remove the dew i remove it because if i want to get a cut done in later in the day it actually helps dry the leaf out earlier which means when i go to cut it i'm not picking up sand on the rear roller and then it's making my hider cut out of whack because if i get like three mil of sand on one side of the roller and none then one side's going to be three mil out to the other side as well. So that's another main reason why I do it. Once the green's more established, I will just leave the dew on and cut it off with the mower in the morning, so that won't be a problem. But it's just while there's so much sand about, I'm trying to avoid getting sand on that rear roller and even picking it up from the front roller, flicking into the actual reel itself as well. So it's the next day and man, that nitrogen in that fertilizer has kicked this thing into gear, plus a granular fertilizer two days ago, three days ago. Mate, look at this. Woo! Woo! Seriously, like that is ridiculous. Look at this compared to last week. We had all this damage on here. Look how much better that is starting to look. It's about the same time of day as well that we're filming this. It was just overcast last time. But even our nasty, nasty burnt patches, which was this was the worst part that I keep showing you guys just here. Look how much that has improved. Awesome. Bit of nitrogen that vitalise, bit of kelp, bit of granular furt, raising the height of cut up. Mate, it's coming back gangbusters. So we're gonna give it a cut today. We're gonna do a 
probably a single cut this morning and maybe a double cut later this afternoon when it's a little bit dry. I just want to get a cut on it this morning and then spray our weeds once we've done one cut. So let's get a cut on it. We're at seven mil at the moment. Well, we're probably gonna take a lot off because I haven't mowed in four days. So we finished, finished our mow. We got, I'd say, close to half a catcher. It is a little bit of a wet cut we got just then, so it's always not gonna be showing it quite as well because it does stick to certain areas and doesn't all collect in a little grass bin. But it's lush. Look at how dark green that is, man. Like, it is lush as that notch and it's pushing it nicely. I wouldn't usually push this much notch, as I said, but we're trying to get it to fill in. We've got our sand base. So we're just pushing it quite a bit. So I'm gonna be pushing a little bit higher nitrogen over the next little bit because all our humidity sort of dropped away. So there's not much chance of disease. When I say pushing it, like once a week, I'll do a higher nitrogen app. Probably not as high as I did with that Pronto product there, which has 24% nitrogen. I'll probably use that product again, but use it at half rate, half rate, sorry, instead of full rate. So I did 200 mil per 100 square meters. So I put it a bit of liter of product over the whole green. Next time I'll just put half a litre out and do that once a week with, with my lawn tips mix. And then I'll probably, yeah, just with the lawn tips mix because that's a foliar feed at the moment. So we are going to get on to spraying these weeds today, finally. The wind's a little bit too high at the moment, but in about an hour it's supposed to dip. So we'll just wait until it does dip down a little bit. But we're mostly dealing with plantain here. You can see there's lots of plantain around the place. There's even a little bit of clover in between that plantain as well. Um, if you guys do get stuck for weeds, the easiest way to identify them is either Google common lawn weeds and try to match it up. Most of them are gonna be in there when you Google that. Or you can use the app called Picture This. You grab your photo, bop it out. Let's click that and it's gonna tell us what our weed is. And it's gonna say um, plantain leaved blue. So there we go. There's quite a few names for it, but plantain is as what we were saying. Now let's see if it works on the mallow. That's one that I'll be interested to see if it figures out. Best to get some with seed head or some flowers if you can find any, if it's got it. Mallow, there we go. Bristly fruited mallow. Yep, it figured it out. Creeping mallow. Beautiful, so it knows what it is. But really, really handy app to help you figure out what types of weeds you've got in here, especially your broad leaves and stuff. Now today we're gonna put in down some Diacamba M, which you can use on most grass types. I'd steer clear of using it on something like Blue Cooch and your buffalo as well. You just gotta be really careful with buffalo and diacamba because it can damage it as well. So you probably have to look at something more like bow and arrow, which is gonna be fine on those grass types. Bow and arrow is gonna be fine on every single grass type, to be honest. The only reason I'm not using it today is of course, because I've got new seed here and new seeds still coming up and it can have a little bit of an impact on germination, believe it or not. So we're gonna use that diacamba and the MCPA, MCPA sorry, at a lower rate. So we're gonna go probably we're gonna go at half rate today to give it a bit of a knock, which will make the weeds stand up within a day. And once I mow into that, it's gonna stress the weeds out like crazy. Even the weeds now that I'm starting to do regular mowing on here are starting to stress out quite a bit and die off. You can see the tips are just starting to burn on them. 
as we look at that. So that's just from regular mowing and stressing the plant out. But we'll give it a knock down at half rate, only because the ryegrass is so young. And then from there, we'll probably bump it up to full rate next application, so we don't get resistance in the weeds and give it a really, really hard knock. And the ryegrass should really be mature enough by then, because it is about two months old. We are going to be doing a blanket spray on a lot of the area here. So we're probably gonna do about three to 400 square meters, is my guess, because I'm not gonna spray absolutely everywhere because there is some spots where there's no weeds at all but i've mixed up basically 400 square meters worth it's 500 square meters around the outside if i have to if i have some left over there's weeds in the paddock i can spray and there's even weeds on the edge of the dam as well which i can spray as well up towards the top but the wind has definitely died down there's little gusts every now and then but the gusts on my weather station anyway it's telling me they're around six or seven k's an hour so not really much which is good so let's spray it <laughs> and we'll see the weeds die off now i know we're not going to get a perfect kill this time we will need a follow-up application that's just the way it is but we're going to knock them hard enough that they're going to stand up and we're going to have a little bit of a kill just trying to be as safe as i can with this new grass and especially with the bent grass there i don't really want any of this drifting onto the bent even though you can use this product on bent grass it's just it's so young we don't want to damage it again. Anyway, let's do it. Now, just want to mention a couple of things. Do not re-enter this area like until it dries out. So don't let your pets on there, your kids, yourself on there until it dries out. That's just the way we go about it. We also want to make sure we don't have rain within 24 hours so we get the best kill possible. Now, if I wasn't doing this on such new grass, I'd use some sort of sticker like wet out. Um, but today I just didn't use it because I wanted to just make sure the chemical didn't stick to the leaf of the grass too much and, and stress it out too much on top of that. So normally put a sticker with it, but today just putting the chemical straight out, leave it for 24 hours without any rain, and then we'll probably do a follow up application in about 10 to 14 days, depending on how much knock we get here. Because the weeds aren't super mature either, we might be okay, but some of them are pretty big, so I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. It's been about an hour and a half. The leaf is dried out now on the surround, so we're gonna give us a cut. I wanna show you guys how much I get off, off a second cut when it's a little bit dry. We should get quite a bit off this cut, or we'll find out, I might be wrong, but we got half a catch of the first one when it was wet, and that's when I had it mowed for four days, and a couple of hours later, we're gonna mow it Let's see how much we get off. After all that, we only got about a quarter of a catcher off, but it cut so clean, man. Really, really nice clippings in there. Oh, maybe a little bit, a little bit over a quarter of a catcher. Like, there's quite a bit in there still. Yeah, good to see. Really good to see. We're getting really good growth off at the moment. Nice and lush, nice and healthy looking, especially after all that bruising. Really nice to see. But how pure, is this green looking this afternoon man we are getting so close like ridiculously close like even these patches here are filled in i wouldn't even say there's any bare spots in this sort of stuff like that is filled in man and the color at the moment is just so dark green probably because we bought the hider cut up as well but it is just looking lush look at that mate can you just imagine what it's going to look like even next week Woohoo! Seriously. And like even the bad patches, like the spots you can see from up here, that are a little bit more bare, have grass all throughout them. Which means that's really gonna start filling in over the next little bit with an extra push of nitrogen and regular mowing now. 
Honestly, I cannot believe how good that is looking at the moment. It is looking so, so good. So glad they got it repaired, that Vitalize really, really did help kick things back in. And just that push of that Pronto as well. <laughs> just giving us some good color. And the carbon green as well. Like, yeah. We're putting a lot of product on, but very, very soon once it's filled in, we will start backing it off and not going so crazy with it. And we'll start doing more of a maintenance program with our fertilizer. A little bit higher than you would with a normal lawn just because we've got sand and we're still trying to build the organics up, but bruh, it looks ridiculous, man. Thank you all so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this journey as much as I am because it's just awesome to see it at this point. I'll make sure I show you guys an update on the weeds next week. We might even do a follow-up app oh, probably the following week, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we're just going to keep ticking along with this, overseeding some spots very soon, and time to start thinking even about our irrigation and our tea boxes and our fairways as well. I need to start thinking about some other stuff because by the end of the year, I want to have everything pretty much complete. Thanks guys so much for watching. Appreciate yous. And I'll see you guys very, very soon.